Isaiah chapter 8. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take a great roll and write in it with a man's pen concerning Mahashalal Hashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jebrekiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord unto me, Call his name Mahashalal Hashbaz. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. So that child that was born was a prophetic sign. The growth of the child and the development of the child's auditory powers was going to coincide with a mighty political event in the time. There was going to be an invasion from the king of Assyria and he's going to cut away the riches of Damascus. He said, before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father, my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Now, so it is prophetic for God. In fact, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Do you still remember Isaiah chapter 8? I think we're still in Isaiah chapter 8. All right. I will, I will take you further. Every child is pointing to something. Every child that God allows to come from eternity to time is a messenger that is pointing to a certain season in your life, just in case you are the parent of that child. If you don't, if you miss, because the thing about spiritual seasons is that if you cannot discern them, you will miss the grace that comes on those seasons. Just like Jesus was to be born in a generation. And the Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. A mighty move of God was missed. That was a move that was announced by a star that wandered out of the regions of Babylon. And people navigated from Babylon to Jerusalem under the guidance of the star as, as a compass. The people that saw the star were unbelievers, were astrologers. And they came to the people that were custodians of the revelatory powers of God to ask for direction. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship. The people that saw the star were unbelievers. Those people traveled. They were shopping for answers. The people that they got the answers from were custodian of the revelatory powers. They did not join them in the quest. Because even if, you, even if the sun falls, Christians will still come to church and say, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. At what point will God catch your attention? He said, before the child should have knowledge to cry, the child was a prophetic sign. And the child was pointing to the times and the seasons for whence the king of Assyria will invade Damascus and Samaria. And his name shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. He did many good things. He raised the dead. Heal the sick. That's not why he came. He came to save his people from their sins. The reason why he came is not anything he did before the cross. Are you, are you following me? It's not anything he did before the cross. He shall save 
his people from their sins. So if you want to understand the ministry of Jesus and the reason why Satan came to attack him, the critical point where Satan showed up to oppose Jesus, it is linked to his purpose, not linked to miracles. His purpose was to go to the cross and the reason why Satan came to meet him in the wilderness to tempt him was to negotiate the cross. And it's possible for you to accomplish what you want without having to go to the cross. You see, all this glory on earth, it has been delivered unto me. We can negotiate. You don't need to. It doesn't need to be the way you want it to be. You know? We can just, then two men can discuss and I turn the powers over to you and there'll be no need for you to put yourself in harm's way. You know, we can talk about this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You will never know, that is, for those of you that are here, you will never, if you don't know your purpose, you cannot even understand your warfare. You don't understand your warfare. There's no context in which we can situate your warfare. You can't explain why the devil has time to come into your space for this kind of discussion. You cannot explain it because you don't have a context, there's no reference point. These wise men saw a sign of the star of a king in the heavenlies. They were not prophets. They were scientists. And in their calculations, they saw that in the history of mankind, it is only once that the star of the king will appear. And since it has appeared in their generation, according to the studies of astrology, they want to find who's the king behind this sign. That was the reason why they traveled. When they came into Jerusalem, the people that gave them the answer to their puzzle, those people were not willing to travel. Are you seeing this thing? It's very easy to miss the signs of God. Very easy to miss the signs of God. There's a statement God made here, Jesus made in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, beginning from verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the, in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the time. Jesus is saying, the same way you, you discern the face of the sky is the same way if you have the skill, the experience, to be able to discern the face of the sky, it is it's the same kind of craft in discerning the signs of the times. So Jesus is saying, when things, when seasons, spiritual seasons, are about to be bettered, these seasons litter the realm of the spirit with sufficient signs that wise men can stumble upon and interpret what is about to come. Are you there? Um, when last were you hungry? Okay, you're hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> when a man is hungry, his body begins to give signs. His body begins to communicate. And the communication of your body in times of hunger is different from how your body communicates in times of thirst. The different you there when a woman produces eggs in her ovaries I don't, I'm not a woman so maybe a woman will help us if you are alive except you, have, you are in a trance if you are alive you should know that eggs have been produced am I, am I speaking everything that has to do with the processes of life are always administered with signs. Are you there? Always administered with signs. 
you know the signs that manifest in the sky that is suggestive of the fact that rainy season is about to come. And if you see those signs and you don't apply wisdom, one of those days you come home drenched in the rain because you did not have the wisdom to secure an umbrella. <laughs> you did not respond according to wisdom in the light, in the face of the signs that are bound. So there is no spiritual thing that happens suddenly. If you are a watchman, are you there in the spirit? No surprise is supposed to break upon you suddenly. If a surprise breaks upon you suddenly as a spiritual man, you need to go back into your closet and repent. There is a gap in your intimacy with God. Nothing, no major thing happens without a sign without a sign so when you begin to offer up sacrifices and you begin to stir up the spirit realm you must be equipped with the kind of patience that it takes for you to begin able to read the signs around one of our pastors in one of the nations he held a 10 hour intercessory prayer and instead of a breakthrough, after the 10 hours intercessive prayer, Satan struck. He struck plenty of the members. And he cried out to me on the phone. Strange things are happening here after our prayer. He said, this is an indication of the fact that, you know, you've been doing 10 hour prayers all this while. And you've been dancing. But your effort now has affected the base of the spiritual entity that is in your city. So the spiritual entity just is just saying we have finally made contact. That's the interpretation of all these reactions that you have seen. And the way to cure it is kindle the flame again. How do you cure it? I know some of you came for night vigil and then when you went back you saw one beast like this. Since that day, you have not returned for night vigil. Because you made that beast stronger than God. That is that beast that teaches God how to be God. You escaped. And you have not returned for night vigil ever since. The way to do it is what? Kindle the flame again. Let the demons know that you are not going to back out. Demons don't give up easily. They, they've worked with men for many years and they have wearied many men by their consistency. So the way to endurance means to outlast the devil. You need to show certain signs that it is not in my nature to back out. You've just met the wrong man. Yes, the way I do my things is that when I focus, I don't retreat, I don't surrender. In the armor of God, we have a helmet. For the head, you know, he said, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are what the issues of life. The issues of life. So, every organ that has to do with the issues of life, and I don't want to go into the Hebrew, I don't want to read that scripture in the Hebrew, it has a different meaning from what you think it means in the Hebrew. The helmet protects, you know protects the skull. The skull is the house for the brain. Can you, can you see that every organ that has to do with life, even God himself made bones to keep it, knows that your brain is important, so he made the skull for it. He knows that your lungs and your heart so important, so he made the rib cage for it. He knows that your spinal cord is important. What did he make for it? He made the, the, the vertebral column to protect your spinal cord. For out of it, a what? In the arm of God, there's a helmet for the head. There's a breastplate of righteousness for the chest region. There's a gospel boot. Someone that is moving with the frequency of urgency that the Holy Spirit sustains about kingdom matters upon the face of the earth. And there is no apparatus that is designed to protect the back. That means the soldier of God must not know retreat and he must not know surrender 
So when you step out and Satan shows up, oh my God, you, you must prove a point to Satan. God already knows the answer, but Satan is not aware. Satan is not aware that you will not back out. Oh, Jesus Christ. So when you see the turbulence, but every man's goods were kept in safety. May the Lord give you understanding about this. <laughs> May the Lord open your eyes to know what I'm talking about. So we knew that the only way to survive here. In fact, for six months, I, I lost my spirit. I couldn't find the location, of, the address of my spirit. I lost it. Because the hey, Please help me t- give your neighbor wisdom. Don't move to Lagos in a hurry. <laughs> ah, six months, I couldn't find my spirit. There was no, no, no prompting, no nudging from the Holy Ghost. I knew I was, I was in trouble. So I took a fast. You see, you don't need to only fast when the church stay fast. When you notice there's an emergency, you cannot pick the radar again. No signs. You've missed your signs. You need to stop it. Starve your flesh and stop your spirit until you begin to hear and you have found the center of gravity that supports your spiritual life. As powerful as I was as an intercessor. As powerful. All the revelations and the encounters I had, I did not have it in that house. It's when I go out and enter buses to go to work. But by the time I come into that place, <laughs> you will need to know how to dig a spiritual borehole to, <laughs> to survive in that. May God give you understanding of what I'm talking about. Ministers of the gospel, you, you run away easily. No. Satan is everywhere. That place you want to run to. The, the spirits there, they dance on one leg. They, you are... <laughs> Go there and dig a borehole. Dig deep, so deep. Beyond the reach of the controlling powers. There's a place like that. Let your life source stem from the depths. I was in that house for seven years. It took me four years to penetrate the environment. And I was in fasting. You know what I told Satan? No retreat. No, sir. I invited the minister of the gospel to preach here. So I went to the airport and picked him up. So we... We left the airport, went to his hotel room, dropped him. Then the security people went and brought him. We were waiting for him outside. When he came into, when he even came into the environment, he did like that. He finished preaching and he called me and said, what did you people do here? I said, we went deep. He said, it's only a borehole that can produce. <laughs> that he knows this town, he's been preaching here for a long time the Satan locked it up and put the keys on his dining table <laughs> please help me tell your neighbor we need to go deeper are you still there the man was the one that asked the angel to show a sign the angel now made him 